Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. And before I start, I just want to thank colleagues and the uh, Sergeant at Arms and, and Jason for a uh, quick response to support the uh, member from Kent North. He's doing fine. Um, so thank you for all of your concern and your help. Uh, Madam the Pres la President, il faudra temps pour nous servir des combustibles fossiles, mais en extraire encore plus de la terre pour les brûler pour leur contenu énergétique nous fait prendre la mauvaise direction. We know what to do to avoid climate breakdown. There can be no further growth in the production of fossil fuels. The wealthy nations of the world have churned through so much oil, gas, and coal that we have dramatically overshot the safe planetary boundaries for everybody in this world. This is having devastating consequences. It seems like, as I speak, the world is burning. And we're only seeing the beginning of it. So what is our responsibility? Well, certainly it's not to pour gasoline on the global infer inferno of climate heat of climate warming. That's what the Premier's quest to frack shale gas from deep below New Brunswick's freshwater aquifers amounts to. That's what this bill would prevent. And I remind all members, it is an amendment to the Oil and Gas Act, not to the Mining Act or to any other piece of legislation, but the Oil and Gas Act. Not only must we end the growth in fossil fuel production, but we also must take steps to reduce existing levels of fossil fuel consumption. That's why I tabled a bill yesterday to amend the Electricity Act to increase our reliance on electricity produced by renewable energy from 40 percent to 80 percent by 2030, which is in keeping with this targets, the same targets that our sister province, Nova Scotia, has and the state of Maine right across uh, the border here with the United States. At the release of MB Power's new corporate strategy yesterday, CEO Lori Clark was asked about these targets, 80 percent renewables by 2030, and she said, this is not out of the realm of possibility. En ce qui concerne la réduction de la demande d'énergie pour l'amélioration de l'efficacité énergétique, elle, Madame Clark, a déclaré que Energy New Brunswick pourrait aider beaucoup plus les gens si le gouvernement provincial fournissait davantage de fonds pour les programmes d'efficacité énergétique. But electricity generation, in fact, Madam Speaker, is not the biggest consumer of fossil fuels in the province and therefore is not the biggest source of carbon pollution or greenhouse gas emissions in the province, driving, actually, is a bigger source. So we need to help people to be able to drive less by providing actual public alternatives like regional bus service, like regional rail service, like a New Brunswick version of the PEI government maritime bus Tuni transit system. And we need in our cities to provide people with the everyday people with the infrastructure that allows them to leave their cars at home and commute within the cities by e-bike, scooter, bicycle walking um, to get across busy highways and busy roads, for example. Yet despite repeated requests from my colleagues, neither the former Liberal government nor the current government have been willing to provide this mandate to the Department of Transportation. No one in government departments has the responsibility for public transportation. So how are people supposed to drive less if there is no alternative available? We need the infrastructure, we need the investments, and we need the capacity within government to deliver on it. Chaque jour, les scientifiques apportent de nouvelles preuves que les effets de la combustion des combustibles fossiles sur notre planète se produisent beaucoup plus rapidement que ce qui était prévu. Cela signifie que nous devons réduire la production et la combustion des combustibles fossiles beaucoup plus, beaucoup plus rapidement que les prévisions actuelles. St. John Energy is on the right path, Madam Speaker. They recently announced they were aiming for net zero carbon emissions by 2030. That's visionary, that's bold, that's ambitious, that's what we need. 
The opening of the Birchall Wind Farm near Laurenville just the other day is a good start with its 40 megawatts of capacity and a 6 megawatt grid scale storage battery to support it. This is the kind of vision and ambition we need to see provincially. The project de loi que j'ai déposé hier, hier augmenterait le taux de déploiement de, de, de l'énergie solaire au Nouveau-Brunswick en exigeant qu'Energie Nouveau-Brunswick achète tout accident produit par les municipalités, les commissions de services régionaux ou les Premières Nations. We need to grow the solar industry in New Brunswick, Madam Speaker. We need to foster the development of a local wind industry, and that was as clear as anything uh, at the Birchill uh, Wind uh, Farm opening, uh, because we don't have a local New Brunswick wind industry, while one is well developed now in Nova Scotia. We need to develop a run of the river energy industry, tremendous potential there, and an energy storage industry in this province. We have some startups who have gone into that uh, field but uh, haven't been feeling the love uh, at all. We need to grow the net zero building industry in our province. Again, lots of expert builders who have experience in this area but not a supportive policy environment in place. What we must not grow is the production of shale gas or other fossil fuels that might be discovered in New Brunswick. Such indiscriminate growth will be the end of us. We've got to scale down ecologically destructive oil and gas production as we scale up public transport, renewable energy and storage, net zero construction, solar powered charging stations as I've seen recently across northern New Brunswick on the Acadian Peninsula and Petit Rocher, very impressive um, uh, that those are already in place, solar powered vehicle charging stations. And of course we need to scale up the electrification of vehicle fleets. So, Madam Speaker, a recent report by the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives entitled Mapping Fossil Fuel Lock-In and Contestation in Eastern Canada found that while Quebec, Nova Scotia and PEI have started implementing strong green development programs, the New Brunswick government has actively obstructed the transition. This bill is an opportunity to stop that obstruction. I know it's difficult for some in the House to let go of the, the idea of growthism at any cost. Growth all the time, everywhere, for anything, no matter what. That's not a responsible way to go, Madam Speaker. We need to think about what we need to grow, not growth of everything, everywhere, all the time, at any cost. Because if we continue to take that attitude, which has been the kind of, the kind of uh, ideology that is, has spurred uh, this government and past governments, it will be our undoing if we can't let go of it. This bill is one small direction in letting go of that destructive ideology, Madam Speaker. I appreciate the leader of the official leader of the now oh, he's got me all mixed up here over on the other side. The leader of the official opposition um, for uh, indicating their support at the second reading for this bill. It's important. I'm glad to see that uh, uh, both opposition parties stand squarely behind the principle uh, incorporated, manifested by this bill. So I thank her and her colleagues uh, for their support and uh, look forward to uh, receiving some, some support on the other side as well, Madam Speaker, as uh, it seems like um, that's kind of the order of the day as people decide different things from uh, where the pack might be going. So uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, thank you once again to all of my colleagues, all of our colleagues, for their concern for the well-being of, uh, of our friend and colleague, the member for Kent North. Thank you.